Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Utica Greens and Beans. That's right, every year for New Year's Day, we try to do some kind of recipe involving beans and greens. And why beans and greens on New Year's Day, you may ask? Because as any scientist will tell you, if you eat poor on the first day of the year, you will enjoy incredible financial prosperity the rest of the year. I mean, think about it, totally makes sense, right? And this year's offering is inspired by a recipe called Utica Greens, which you'll read a lot more about on the blog. But for now, we better get to prepping. And the star of the show is Escarole. I have two heads here. And you know we've used this before for many a delicious recipe. And it's very easy to prep. You're simply going to trim that bottom off, which is going to release all those individual leaves. And then you're going to take a handful of those individual leaves and kind of wad them up and just slice them across like that into kind of large pieces. You know the drill. Decide on a size and stick with it. So I'm going to go ahead and cut up two heads of Escarole. And what we're going to need to do is wash those very carefully. So I'm going to put them in a big bowl of cold water. And I did mine twice. There's usually a lot of sand and silt in this. All right, so we're going to give that stuff a very thorough washing. And then we're going to blanch it very briefly in salted water. So generously salt some water, bring it to a boil. And once it comes to a boil, we're going to go ahead and add our escarole. And we're only going to cook this for about two minutes. All right, it's not even really cooking. We're just sort of wilting it a little. Now you see some recipes say boil it for like five or six minutes until it's kind of tender. But I don't really like that. All right, this is a dish that gets finished under the broiler, so I don't want to cook it too far here. So just like two minutes, and then we're going to fish it out into a bowl. And then to stop the cooking process, we're going to go ahead and run cold water over that. All right, you don't really need ice water, just cold water will do. Like I said, that's going to stop the cooking. And then we'll simply let that drain on the side until needed. And it's on to the pancetta phase. So in a big skillet with a little touch of olive oil, I'm going to go ahead and crisp up some pancetta. And I'm going to use medium heat here pretty much throughout. Now, a lot of people, especially in Utica, use prosciutto, but I really do prefer the pancetta for this. I like to get this fairly crisp. To me, you lose that beautiful caramelized pork flavor, and it can get a little funky. So I really do like the pancetta here. And as you can see, we're going to cook that fairly well. And then what we're going to do when our pancetta or prosciutto looks like that, we're going to add some kind of hot pepper. Now, I'm going to use jalapeno because it's winter, and I can't really get those nice summer hot long Italian peppers, but pretty much anything's going to work here. And obviously, if you want to use something sweeter and milder like a bell pepper, go for it. But anyway, you'll figure it out. It's just peppers. And I just gave mine kind of a rustic chop, rustic being a euphemism for not caring what they look like. And we're going to cook those in that hot pancetta oil for just a couple minutes, just till they start to soften. At which point, we're going to add another mandatory ingredient, a whole bunch of chopped garlic. Now, be careful. We don't want this to brown. So I'm going to give this, let's say, a one-minute sizzle. And then we're going to go ahead and pour in a cup of chicken stock or broth. And we're going to go ahead and bring that up to a simmer. And while we do, I'm going to give it a couple pinches of black pepper and some salt. As usual, your job description will include adjusting the seasoning. And as soon as that mixture starts simmering, we are ready to finish the dish. So to do that, we're going to add our greens back in. But before we do, I'm going to add one bonus ingredient that is not in the original, beans. And I'm using cooked cranberry beans here, also known as borlotti beans. I think that's what they are in Italian. So I'm going to stir those in. Those are obviously already cooked. And then at that point, we're going to go ahead and dump in our drained escarole. And we'll take a spoon and we'll mix that up so everything's kind of evenly distributed. Or some might say distributed. And then right here, let's go ahead and turn off our heat. And then the final step, what really makes Utica Greens, Utica Greens, the gratin topping. So we're going to sprinkle in about a half cup of plain breadcrumbs. Do not use panko. Do not use anything fancy. You just want very fine, plain, generic, cheap breadcrumbs. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our spoon and mix that in, but not thoroughly. I do not want full integration. So you see how I'm using the tip of the spoon? I don't want you pressing and packing everything down. All right, I want to be able to see a little bit of that breadcrumb on the greens, on the beans. All right, so that looks perfect. I can still see a little breadcrumb. At that point, I'm going to give it a little shake of red pepper flakes or cayenne. I want with red pepper flakes. I don't want to be pigeonholed. And then after that little shot of extra pepper, a tiny, tiny dusting of extra breadcrumb. We're not going to mix this one in. I just want to kind of dry the top off a little bit. In preparation of the last couple ingredients, which are some finely grated Parmesan cheese. Of course, we're using the Parmigiano Reggiano, as we always do. And we're going to give that a thorough dusting. You pretty much want to cover the surface. And at this point, we're going to preheat our broiler to high. We're going to finish with a light drizzling of olive oil. And then that's going to go under a hot broiler until the top is golden brown. And I'd love to tell you how long that takes, but I can't. Depends on how far away you are from the flame and how hot your broiler is. But you don't need times when you have eyes because you're simply going to look at it and you'll tell when it's done. So I looked at mine here and I was like, that's getting close. But I think I want it to go a little longer. So I left it in another couple minutes. And I looked at it again and it looked like this. And I was like, hey, that's done. 
So I took it out, I brought it into some marginally better light, and that Utica Greens plus beans is done. And let me tell you, we've probably done at least four or five beans and greens type dishes on the blog. And this not only is my new favorite, but more importantly, my wife Michelle's favorite. So this definitely got her stamp of approval, and there's no mystery why. It is so delicious, so nutritious, and so easy, there's just nothing not to like about it. And yes, the original Utica Greens does not have beans, but since beans with greens is such a classic combination, it totally works. And while I generally use this as a side dish, in this case with some beautiful dried Italian sausage, it is certainly satisfying enough and flavorful enough to be its own main course. But anyway, like I said, you make this on New Year's Day, you eat this, and then the rest of the year will bring you untold fortunes. And how much specifically should you expect? I can't tell you, it's untold. But not knowing is all part of the fun, so I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy and have a very happy and prosperous 2014.